masonry, carpentry, electronics, auto mechanics, and many, many others. Mm -hmm. So we were encouraged, pardon? Then to your lack of employment, the young people had to yeah. go away from home. You know, every, every summer, right. most of the young people around here went to Atlantic City to work. Relative to white America, we were taught that a um, lot of the values, a lot of the values that, were, that came into being were set by middle class, let's say, white America. Uh, in a way, we were to emulate them, you know, because at this point, we were at the very threshold of integration. Uh, emulate them, uh, take on many of these as much as possible uh, middle class values and virtues. Um, that was a kind of, of, of inferior stigma placed on black people. You had to, you had, but you had to look through it to see exactly where, you know, the, the real truth behind it. That is uh, a stigma of inferiority. You know, you, you, you're not exactly where you should be, you know, but you need to do this, you need to do thus and so um, in, order to be, in order to be accepted in a white world, into a white culture, you see. Uh, there, there's diff they have their values, we have our values. But in a general sense, and the world was teaching this too, in a general sense, our values did not bear, they would tell us in general, as much weight as theirs. So let's try, what, what, does, this, what does this mean then? What do you say? Go to college, you know. Uh, excel in school while you're here and wherever you do go. Uh, appearance, reading, writing, many other things. And then, too, in, in this area, we were taught to stay in our place, you know, whatever that mm -hmm. meant, stay in your place, because our parents were afraid that we, if we stepped out of our place, we might get killed, we might get hurt, because they knew that because of racism here in, in, in Prince Edward County, you know, anything could happen to you. So they were fearful. It hurt, but we had, it, it brought about some self-pride, too, because in school we were taught we, we, had, we had role models, like I mentioned before. We had role models, and our teachers, you know, instill uh, self-pride. And we just knew that someday, you know, we, it wasn't going to be like this all, all, all the time, that someday we were going to be somebody. So we just, you just kept that in your minds, that one day we're going to leave Prince Edward. We're not going to be in the for the rest of our lives, you know. And for the most part, most of us did. There were... Uh, imaginary geographical boundaries in our minds as to how far we could go. There were imaginary psychological boundaries in our mind and emotional boundaries in our minds as to how far we could go, you know, relative to uh, the black-white situation. So we learned to work within the confines, to be creative as much as possible, to make, as, as black people say a lot of times, make do with what you have. And by this adaptability uh, to this own inner culture, you know, this is what brought, up, brought forth many of, the, th many of the, the, the qualities and the strengths. And it meant that we had to live beyond where we were. You know, we, 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 we were not taught just to watch where you're walking right now, you know, just to look down right where you're in the 50s. But look ahead. There's something out there, you know. Go get it. <coughs> This article I'm reading from is The Daily Beast on the Netflix doc, CIA Flooded Black Communities with Crack. To discuss crack, cocaine is to tackle a litany of bigger, intertwined American issues, racial and economic disparities inner city poverty and crime, media reporting and sensationalism, political and legislative campaigning and action, mass incarceration and exploitation, and personal and communal responsibility. All of these topics are present in crack, cocaine, corruption, and conspiracy. Yet, at, year, at mere 89 minutes, Stanley Nelson's new Netflix document, premiering January the 11th, 
bites off far more than it can chew, resulting in analysts that ranges from the persuasive persuasive to the cursory to the borderline indigenous. Crack cocaine cons- corruption and conspiracy employs a general chronological structure to tell its sprawling tale beginning with the 1970s through the 1980s rise of cocaine whose cost gave it an aura of being the glamour drug of the rich and powerful that made it inaccessible for most lower income black Americans whose dreams of using coke the film contends were spurred on the movies like Scarface. However, things took a turn when dealers began distilling cocaine into crack, a cheaper and more potent variant that became an an immediate substance abuse sensation. Before long, entire urban communities, which were already struggling with mounting unemployment, poverty, and crime were being decimated by the scourge of crack, which was perpetrated by those young men and women who saw an opportunity to profit off others. Suffering became instant millionaire dealers. If it wasn't for economic disparities, if it wasn't for the changing of our values to white America's values, do you think that our people would eat off of each other? Eat the fuck up and all that shit, man. Won't you tell them about how you got started on crack and what attracted you to Skid Row, little homie? Well, I'm gonna tell you the truth, bro. And everything I love, man, you know, it, this one, uh, you know, but I, man, I never thought in a million years. I ain't gonna lie, I'm 24 years old. I was born in 1989. I'm, I was born and raised. I heard my. Uh, Hello, this is Kim Kardashian.
not cool anymore. It's, it sucks. Man. It's an awful thing. But, I mean, it was great, yeah. You know, it was cool. And, you know, people don't see the air going out. Uh, you know, the air going downtown sucks. But, uh... Sexual exploitation has decimated to many of our women and has pushed us into, we have been pushed into an economic disparity to where we don't have many of us feel like a choice to go out and do certain things to make money, to make ends meet. It's a curse of being invaded, of being stolen, of being taken, of being robbed of that which was sacred. The men mental state has been broken. To where the mind no longer connects to the true purpose of the body. Abuse, rape has transformed the mind, thinking of the body. It brought us down to a lower level of existence, of knowing, it has decimated. We definitely have the talent, the brilliance to turn around our situation. But only if we can take our own power back and utilize it in a way that benefits us instead of a way that decimates us. We can start by playing chess. History in the making. Think I cried. For the last time Now all you see is rage In these weary eyes It's raining here inside This heart of mine Feel like I'm walking through the storm Without a guy You took all my power Left me in distress Now after all said and done I'm left with emptiness Say you're sorry, say you're sorry, you say I'll be alright, you left me in the dark, but now I see yeah, the light. This now viral video of the arrest of Marquise Johnson, a 20-year-old black student at the University of Virginia, leading to tension and turmoil on UVA's campus today. The government calling for a criminal investigation. 
we're going to get to the bottom of it. And someone's going to have to answer for it. The arrest caught on tape. The college junior requiring 10 stitches after witnesses say officers acted with unnecessary force early Wednesday morning outside a bar popular among students. I go to UVA! 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 Well, it was, it's been called Atlanta's two-year nightmare, and for good reason. Black children snatched from the streets. Their bodies found along roads, in woods, and rivers. Everyone is looking out for the Atlanta killer, the Atlanta murderer, the Atlanta monster. Finally, police think they have their serial killer. They stopped playing with him, and the first words out of his mouth were, I'll bet this is about those boys, isn't it? But decades later, with the case closed, doubts persist. That may go down as one of the greatest miscarriages of justice in the history of this state. A city too busy to hate is an unofficial motto of Atlanta, Georgia. But between 1979 and 1981, this is nearly torn apart by... That summer, some mothers of murder victims, including Willie Mae Mathis and Camille Bell, formed a committee to put pressure on the Atlanta Police Department. Soon after, the city announced the creation of a homicide task force. Those mothers really got that thing going, and it was about a week later when the Atlanta police assigned, I believe it was five detectives, just to look into this case. In the following weeks, two more children disappeared, including 12-year-old Clifford Jones. He was found strangled behind a small shopping plaza next to a dumpster. For the first time, a full year after the murders began, police started telling the public that the crimes might all be related. All of the cases involved young black people under the age of 15. The method under which they were killed in terms of the homicide involved some similarities. You have to look at the possibility that there may be some connection. The children were all about the same age, size, and build. Many lived in the same poor Atlanta neighborhoods. Most were boys who earned money doing odd jobs or selling trinkets on street corners. The city's task force was expanded. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation got involved. Still, investigators had no good suspects. September 1980. 11-year-old Darren Glass became the 14th child to vanish after stepping off a bus at an intersection. Frustrated and terrified, Atlanta's black community came together for weekly marches organized by the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. We wanted to send a message to the authorities that, that they had to come to, uh, to bring to bear all the resources at their command to solve these crimes. In October 1980, the body of another child, a 10-year-old boy named Charles Stevens, was found dumped along a road. Acknowledging the public's anger over the unsolved murders, city officials urged unity. We can't start pointing fingers and become divisive as a community. What we have to do is recognize that we have a concern that Im impacts on all of our citizens. Just three days later, an experience.